This is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're exploring Marvel 616, the documentary series on Disney+. Plus. We're talking about the second episode of Season 1 of Marvel 616, Higher, Further, Faster. Welcome back, fellow defenders. I really like saying that. We're back. It's good, def- isn't it? I know. Yeah, we're back defending the Marvel verse and looking at the documentary series Marvel Six One Six, Season One, Episode Two: Higher, Further, Faster. Uh, we've already talked about Episode One uh, of the show, Japanese Spider Man, which was good fun. Um, but in preparation of returning to the Marvel verse after all this time away, we're talking about the documentary series Marvel Six One Six because we will be talking about One Division and all the new Marvel Disney Plus shows next month. And we wanted to talk about a bit of Marvel next uh, year. Oh god, next year, yeah, not just next month, <laughs> January twenty twenty one. That's right. It does feel like it's only a week away till next year. So I suppose next month is, is appropriate as well. <laughs> well. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you've been enjoying watching uh, the. Marvel 616 documentary. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, make sure you subscribe to us over at tvpodcastindustries.com. You can find us on any good or villainous podcast catcher, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts. We're available pretty much anywhere. Or you can find us over on our website at tvpodcastindustries.com. But let's have a chat about this episode, the second episode of Marvel 616, Higher, Further, Faster. This was the episode you were talking about before that was directed by Gillian Jacobs um, from Community. You were talking about that in the first episode. Yeah, this, um, and, and it was kind of, it was, I think the whole 616 series was sort of outlined and promoted at the San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah. And I remember her saying back then that effectively all the directors were coming to Marvel and Disney Plus with their ideas of what they wanted to deliver in in their specific documentary kind of had an open carte blanche of what they wanted to cover. So this is the documentary that Gillian came up with. She wanted to have a look at what uh, impact women have had over the years of Marvel all the way back to the early days of Marvel. And um, what kind of stood out to you about this episode, John? Well, I mean, I think first off, this is really is a brilliant look at women at Marvel um, mm-hmm. and the approach. Uh, in some cases, trailblazing to comics and stories of female representation over time. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it really is kind of basically saying that women are both compelling professional writers and have compelling stories to, to tell. Yeah. I think it's really this, sad that you have, you have to kind of point that out. Exactly. In 2020. You know? Um, but I mean, it, it's, it's even really, there's a really good um, quote from Neela Margruder, um, and she talks um, about um, that there has been this move in writing from um, two, sorry, two mirrors instead of windows, that it's about seeing yourself in the story that you're telling mm. rather than looking through a window at someone else and telling their story yeah. so that it becomes much more personal, much more insightful. And that, you know, a lot of women um, through the, the time period, um, it's because this, this starts from 1940s and goes right up to the present day, but mm-hmm. that a lot of women w- were, were writing women um, through that window um, but it filtered also by um, society and a, and a man's look at um, at females. So you know they're kind of they have no agency, or they're kind of like the housewife, and so mm-hmm. it's very restrictive. Um, oh, like we always say about the superhero comics, where it's the if there's a female in the storyline, it's the girlfriend or the sister or the daughter or something like that. Yeah, they're never the main character. So um, and it, it's really sort of changing that over time. And mm-hmm. I think what really comes out most of all that I found, um, and th- it was my impression that, you know, when it starts off in the 1940s yeah. and it goes through to the present day, uh, you know, it's this journey through eras. Um, but what was really interesting was that how heavily involved women were in writing and drawing and creating comics mm-hmm. in the 19. 19- 40s and um, you, you know they talk about world war Two and yeah. uh, the female labor force being mobilized but there's this whole role calls like trina robbins um and 
just how uh, I think Top Mills as well, who actually created Miss Fury, all these comics, and even down to the 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 point where the male female readership of comics was fifty fifty, mm-hmm. and you had this sudden crash in the fifties with the comics code were. Like with video games, with movies, um, you know, with TV, telephones, that, you know, comics were going to rot the brains of children. And oh, it yeah. forced, it's not to say, you know, it, 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 the, the slant suddenly became different because they were looking for the most profitable stream and they yeah. said it was boys, teenage boys that they focused on. And so all that golden age of superheroes or the silver age, and it was all men being drawn for teenage boys. And yeah. it, it became to a point where it wasn't considered that girls should be reading comics. Yeah. Um, it wasn't what girls did. It was for boys. And yet... Almost the decade earlier from the 1940s, you, you hear all the, the women that on the documentary saying about how they would go down to their local shop and just, you know, pick these comics and pick exactly. comics with women on the front cover. And it felt like there was a actual regressive step backwards. Yeah. And um, moving into the 50s. Cause it is one of those kind of self-fulfilling prophecies. If you say that it, at the time in the 40s that it was 50 50 readership and then suddenly you only start producing comics for young boys and kids and, and yeah, young boys written by men, then of course your readership starts turning towards 70, 80, yeah. 90%. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Uh, and But it was just fascinating, that contextualization, mm-hmm. I think, that, that's brought out in, in this in this documentary. Yeah. Um, the, the other great little look is um, Maria uh, Severin. Um, and this was a penciler, a lady who did penciling mm-hmm. um, in, in the 60s. Uh, I do like that they called the the main hub of Marvel Comics in New York, the floor, it was called the bullpen. Yes, of course, um, the bullpen. Yes. Which is very masculine in, in and of itself. A, a little bit, but that's kind of what they used to call the, uh, the in the newsrooms, they would yeah, always have a exactly. bullpen. But I remember from the back pages of comic books, the letters pages, I was called bullpen bull- bulletins. So uh, you'd have a writer responding to you. I think that's what they were saying about Flo Steinberg, another one of the, uh, the ladies featured in the documentary, that she was the one responding to all the letters that would come in from the kids she'd respond in this in this really interesting marvel voice you know she would be the voice talking directly to their customers effectively so uh, so i love that that she was there for so many years and she's the one that people would hear back yeah. from if they talked to marvel Flo steinberg produced the marvel voice mm-hmm. in the correspondence pages love and that. and marie severin by pure happenstance really mm-hmm. got exposure where all of a sudden, I think it was um, in a in a magazine where she did drawings for the magazine. Yes, and um, it wasn't even uh, Marvel. It like it was a you know a weekly magazine on lifestyle, mm. and all of a sudden the editor in Marvel was like she can draw, and it moved her to start drawing and leading on drawing and to really make that name for herself. Um, in in the industry, and I, I thought that was fascinating. Just you know glimpse into how you know you hear some of her peers some of her female colleagues saying she was never really into pushing say a female agenda she just loved what she did but by doing what she loved she inspired and influenced and shaped exactly um all these women um to come after her and yeah. uh, they took inspiration from her i thought that was a really a uh, great little look into Marie Severin. Mm-hmm. Um, the the documentary focuses very much on uh, Sana Amanat and G Willow Wilson um, oh, yes, through the creation of Miss Marvel. Yeah, um, I love that story. I really love the idea that you know they're not finished creating new characters just because they created all these popular characters in the 60s, that there is a point that you need to start definitely. creating, you know, as you say, the mirrors, the characters that people can see of themselves. You know, we we always talk about it, you know, that, that there are characters that you latched on to as a kid, even though they didn't represent you, it's kind of the only thing that you're presented with. So you kind of go, okay, well, I guess my favorite hero is going to be Doctor Strange for you or something like that because I like the magic bit. I may not be anything like the character, but then when you do get presented with a character that mirrors yourself, you suddenly have a much greater attachment to that character than you would for anything, anything else. And I think this story of uh, of Sam Amanat and and G, uh, Will, Willa Wilson creating Miss Marvel, I think it's just this lovely idea of getting two creators who know 
the character backwards before writing a word on the page. They know exactly who this Miss Marvel is. So she comes fully formed out of their two minds uh, combined. Exactly. Both Muslim women, um, you know, drawing on their experiences uh-huh. um, it, it, at a time after 9-11 with, you know, the anti-Muslim, uh, anti-Islam well, yeah. sentiments uh, to create a, a Muslim... Um, female American character. American hero yeah, yeah. that um is is really just very fascinating. I mean there's a great point with G. Willow Wilson where she says you're joking, aren't you? And like the cards are stacked against us already. Yeah. And you know, we're just creating putting this on the periphery. And then she talks about when, you know, the first press, second, yeah. and then the sixth press of Miss Marvel and them going to Comic Con and seeing how it's inspired uh, cosplayers, yeah. girls dressing up and the whole um, connected with Captain Marvel and the Carol Corps. Um, just so, so fascinating. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, what's it? Kelly Sue DeConnick, who mm-hmm. did uh, Captain Marvel. Like, she is another prominent figure here. Yes, she uh, is. And, I was, I'd follow her on Twitter. She is fantastic. Yeah, she on Twitter, is too. really amazing. Yeah. And Louisa uh, Simonson and Annie Nascenti, um, really interesting uh marvel women here Mm -hmm. talk about it i think annie nascenti really has an interesting point that she makes about having you know she she was editing and and doing the work on daredevil and she she was talking about fighting and how you know she she took up martial arts so that she could you know get the poses and understand fighting because that's what happened yeah and then it was this sort of step back where she said but that's not what that's not how you always resolve something yep. you know looking at it from her view in, in a very different way and mm-hmm. um, and you know Kelly Sue DeConnick saying the same thing that a lot of women in literature uh, in comics were seen as always against one another fighting um to to get ahead and she tried to make it where they work together they still had differences of opinion but of they work together to get ahead you yeah. know and i thought this was really um fascinating um along with neela magruder uh so she created i i actually hadn't heard of her before she created an online comic mfk right and um, and had won uh, an award for that out of the blue uh, for r- new writer mm-hmm. in, in in comics and you know she was brought uh, on to by marvel as the first black writer doing um tippy toe and rocket raccoon uh, crossover okay. <laughs> and um you know again it was just fascinating hearing it. i mean both her, her and uh, sana amanat um you know they they talked about you know the 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 society level the family level and all, also like the personal level mm-hmm. um of um, having to fight and break through or things that he- held you back, you know. So, I mean, on a society level, it's with that comics code. It's with it being a male-dominated industry mm-hmm. um, where they're, they're dealing with that at that scale, you know. But- well, absolutely. Like, the comic code itself, you know, it was probably just to, just to mention it, Marvel broke away from the comics code in the 70s because they were sick of being told what they could and couldn't publish effectively. Um, not that they were doing, you know, pornographic comics or anything of that sort. They just felt that the restrictions that were being put on them that made them only able to write books for five-year-old kids meant that effectively, by the time the kids turned 10, they'd be turning away from the books, right? Because... Their books are only written for a certain age group. It's like the Beano and Dandy in Ireland and the UK. Yeah, yeah. You're writing it for an audience that is going to grow up, move on from them, where, because you're bound by this comics code. Um, Marvel famously broke away from it because they wanted to do stories about things that would affect teenagers, uh, drug addiction, that kind of stuff that was happening. And they wanted to tell those stories in their books. And now we're seeing this kind of rejuvenation of Marvel in a way. You know, I work for a company that has a, a really great phrase that effectively talks about um, by having diversity, you can only win. By having more knowledge available to you, you can only win. If you cut yourself off from diversity, you cut yourself off from ideas, which seems to be, and is great to see, that's also seems to be the Marvel way, where they have 
real people coming on board to tell their stories through Marvel Comics. It's, it's a really inspiring episode, this one as well. I really enjoy it. It, it really is. Yeah. And, you know, hearing some of the family um, sort of struggles, uh, you know, you hear Neela talking about how, you know, her, her parents, you know, the idea of being an artist and, and a oh, comic yeah. book creator yeah. uh, rather than being an accountant <laughs> and, and doing something like that, which I thought was really interesting. You know, all these different layers. And then you have Sana, um, who had supportive parents, but th- there was that almost that internal personal conflict. Like she wanted to be a lawyer to change the way people, um, you know, for the better yeah. and change society for the better. And, and she, what she couldn't realize at that time was or that she wouldn't know is that she did that through comics mm-hmm. by creating role models for young girls, uh, young girls across all different races and yeah. uh, had this, had this hero that they could identify with, not just maybe because she was Muslim, but certainly for a lot of Muslim people, there's a nice moment where they're looking at the correspondence, people from Pakistan yeah. um, and, and from, from other co- uh, Muslim countries around the world, but also that she, you know, um, the family dynamics of yeah. it and the um, almost the, the introvertedness of um Miss Marvel, yeah. um, which relates back to Sana, remembering how she grew up. Um, and Miss Marvel is the Marvel you know? fanboy. The character is the one that absolutely loves the Marvel superheroes, which is every comic book reader out there. So everybody has something to identify with Miss Marvel, which I, which I love as well. Yeah. So I again, this is another one that is really inspiring. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think uh, is a definite recommend uh, from myself. I think, yeah. you know, this includes a whole roll call of women involved in, in comics. And I think one of them says it themselves, you know, the history of comics has always been about Stan Lee or Jack Kirby mm-hmm. um, and, and these different male writers or artists. And, you know, you had a whole roll call, as I say, some I hadn't heard of mm-hmm. um, from Trina uh, Robbins. There's Louisa Simonson, Hilda Terry, Violet Barkley, um, Franny Corey, uh, Zelda Ormer, Fran Hopper, Tart Mills, a whole range of of different women involved at mm-hmm. different times um really creating um new stories adding new characters uh, that have connected with people um through the different eras of of comics yeah. um to inspire them to to push those boundaries further or to be that person pushing that boundary. So uh, a fantastic episode. For Higher, further, faster. John. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, really good job. Again, Gillian Jacobs as the director of the episode doing a really good job on documentary. Uh, really intrigued to see what she does in the future because this would have been her first kind of directorial yeah, debut. Yeah, I, so. I hadn't um, heard of her directing before. Um, yeah. As I say, for me, she's Community. Brit- uh, she's Britta from Community. Mm-hmm. Loved her. Um, and... Yeah, it would be really interesting to see I'm just what intrigued comes because uh, it, there's something that it really felt like she was telling an emotional story, but had so much available to her because the story goes back to the 1940s. So there's a huge, huge, massive amount, kind of like 80 yeah. years of history condensed into this uh, one hour of the show. I think it's one of the longest of the episodes, about an hour, about an hour and ten minutes. I yeah, think. yeah. Um, but that's a, that's a really good thing that means she found her story and found and found what the tales she wanted to tell out of this history so loads more there and hopefully we'll get to see her do something else in the future um do some other kind of documentary in the future or maybe you never know maybe she'll direct an episode or two of one of the uh, marvel disney plus shows um is that it for for this episode john absolutely it's a, a recommend from me um and it's a it's a great little documentary yeah. uh, episode um about uh, the women of Marvel Absolutely. making new stories and new characters. Uh, really, really good. Um, so excellent, excellent. So that's the kind of writing side. I think the next episode, episode three, is uh, amazing artisans. That's the a lot of artists uh, working in in Marvel. So we'll talk about that one next time. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode where we where we discussed Marvel six one six episode two higher further faster. Yes, make sure you subscribe to the podcast over on the podcast. Cam- of your choice you can head on over to tvpodcastindustries.com or you can also support us by subscribing to our patreon over at patreon.com forward slash tv 
podcast industries. Remember, just another little shout out for uh, WandaVision mm -hmm. on January the 15th, 2021, where we will begin our coverage of, of the Marvel TV shows mm -hmm. on Disney Plus. Wanda Maximoff. Scarlet Witch. Yes, it looks very Pleasantville. Um, so at it times, be, yeah, it, it just looks weird at times that that trailer <laughs> is is fascinating. But really looking forward to that. Also looking forward to going on to the next episode of Marvel Six on Six. Uh, if you want to share any of your thoughts about these episodes or just let us know what you're thinking, uh, email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. With that, we'll talk to you next time. Yes, you can also join us over on our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TV Podcast Industries and also over on Twitter, our handle for tweeting is at TV Pod Industries. That's the one. <laughs> yes, thanks so much fellow defenders for joining us for episode two, higher, further, faster. Can't wait to delve in with our episode three titled Amazing Artisans. Um, remember, keep watching, keep listening, and keep, keep defending. defending. Bye. Bye.